Welcome everyone. Today I'm sitting down with Apply Board. If you've never heard of Apply Board, you will soon. It's been recognized in the business community as Canada's fastest growing tech company. It's a Canadian educational technology company founded in 2015 in Waterloo, Ontario. The company offers an artificial intelligence recruitment platform that helps international students apply for post-secondary studies abroad. Today, I have five employees have joined us to talk about the company, the industry, career pathways at Apply Board, and how to position yourself for a successful application process. Those who are joining us today are Michael Korn, Director of Talent, Head of Global Recruitment. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Trisha. Great to be here. Tavni Kara, Lead Recruiter. Welcome, Tavni. Thank you for having us, Trisha. Michelle Rodriguez, Talent Coordinator. Welcome, Michelle. Thanks, Trisha. Danilo Farias, Recovery Specialist, who is a graduate from our Advanced Business Administration Program. Welcome, Danilo. Thank you, Trisha. It's a pleasure to be here. Akshara Sabarwal, Student Support Officer, who is a graduate of our HR Management Program. Welcome, Akshara. Thank you, Trisha. It's good to be here. So I'm glad you could all join us today and very excited to learn more about Apply Board. Uh, I wanted to start with Michael as the Director of Talent and Head of Global Recruitment. Um, Michael, tell us a little bit more about Apply Board's history and the company's focus. Yeah, so the, the history is really interesting. Um, and the history is really taking a look at what wasn't in the market by our three founders. Our three founders found that it was incredibly hard and a lot of effort needed to be done on the student's side to actually apply to a school internationally. So our founders looked at that as a gap in the market and actually designed an ed tech tool uh, platform uh, technology that allows for secure applications, um, faster applications and ease of applications that really helps make education um, a right instead of a privilege. And that is one of our driving morals as we look at it. Um, if we fast forward, when I began my journey with Apply Board uh, back in May, we were around 535 employees. Um, today, we just rounded 1,400 total employees. So the growth is three um, X right now within a fiscal year. And we plan to continue that growth uh, with our mission to support students everywhere, far reaching areas of our globe. That is incredible growth. And it's I, you know, I have been reading about the, the founders too of the company and uh, they just saw this need and, and we see it. We have, there's a lot of movement of international students seeking out uh, education in different countries and it's a lot to go through. I would imagine it is quite difficult to, to be able to figure out where to go next and having um, a place where you can gather all that information and quickly sort through different colleges and universities around the world. It's a really brilliant idea. Agree, agree. And one more thing to add about that is it's a mission driven company. Um, we often refer to when we're speaking with our candidates, Tricia, um, people refer to the startup arena, depending on what funding level you're in. Uh, we are considered a unicorn with our valuation right now. Um, but with that, we also are a rocket ship, meaning that we are growing exponentially in headcount and investments. With that being said, we talk to our candidates about being a rocket for the right reasons. We're not just adding people or adding platforms to scale our numbers. We're doing so in support of the demand for the product. So that's what's really exciting when we look at it is how we're meeting supply with demand from an ed tech perspective. Right. It's and it's a, it's just so timely. It's perfect. Um, next, I want to ask Tavneet uh, a little bit about the recruitment process. So, can you share the hiring process and what sorts of jobs you recruit for? For sure. So, I recruit for the customer experience department. It's one of our largest departments in Apply Board. Um, I would say I hire for roles across the board within CX, um, mainly specialist, team lead or manager positions. 
the hiring process can look different for each of these positions. Um, for a specialist role, it's more simple. There's a phone screen, a hiring manager interview combined with a culture interview in one. So that's just two steps right there. When it comes to a team lead or a manager, there could be various steps as well as a technical task. So let's say about three to four steps for a team lead or a manager position. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, I want to get um, a Daniela, who's a graduate in on this. You've gone through the hiring experience. Um, can you share your journey to get to apply board and how did you find the hiring process? Thank you, Tricia. Um, yes, while studying at George Brown College, I found a job as a teller at Scotiabank. Uh, right after I graduate, I became a financial advisor, so I was promoted within the bank. And during that time, I realized that my actual passion was to help people and in the customer experience part, rather than uh, the financial part of it necessarily. Uh, that's when I decided to move on to the education field and uh, do by doing a lot of research, I found uh, apply board and, and apply for it. And the, the hiring process was very smooth. Uh, it, as Tammy previously said, as an specialist, my, my hiring process involved uh, telephone screening with her, by the way. And right after I did have a meeting with uh, my current team lead and the manager at the time, the, the meeting, the interview process lasted around 45 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was a very smooth uh, process and it, I felt more like a conversation rather than an interview. It was a very good experience and I'm glad I'm part of this team. Well, it sounds like uh, a very welcoming environment that they were about you rather than the, just the process of hiring and going through the typical questions. It sounds like it, from what Michael's saying too, they want to get really great people on board and that takes a certain kind of recruitment atmosphere that, that is set up as well. That's great. Thank you, Danilo. Uh, Akshara, how about you? How did, how did you hear about apply board? Uh, what do you enjoy most about working there? Sure, so thank you, Trisha, for asking the question. Um, I heard about Apply Board from everywhere. Like everybody was talking about it. It was so famous. And uh, like even uh, when, whenever I used to open my LinkedIn to update my profile, there was like um, Apply Board, uh, great news. Like uh, we help these many students, these many countries are coming up. And they partnered over like with 1500 schools in those 4 countries, Canada, US, UK and Australia. So that was great. And even like after I graduated from George Brown, I was also looking in a, in TD bank and over there, I used to see so many employees from apply board. So, um, that's how I, um, got to know about apply board and, um. Uh, yeah, it's I'm I'm great to be um, like I'm so grateful to be a part of Apply Board today. And the the best thing uh, about Apply Board is like we have uh, one of our core values called work, like making work fun. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't feel like you know you're working as a robot every time. So that's what is a great part about Apply Board that you feel involved and you feel like. It's it's we are having fun with working. So even we have like some great uh, events going on. We have talent shows. So all of those things. So I am having a really good time here, and uh, yeah, that's that's my journey. <laughs> wow, that that's great, uh, Akshara. I, and you know, it makes a huge difference, right? It really, I think when you feel like you matter to a company. Um, when they do allow for a lot of socializing within teams, so you get to know who you're working with, those things make the difference, I think, with a lot of companies and who you choose to stay with. Exactly. Very nice. Michelle, I have a question for you. Um, what are the soft skills that make a difference for success at the company? Um, I, I, there's a lot of talk nowadays about, we call them human skills, and as you hear that at, at our college, uh, soft skills. What are those skills that you're looking for when you're recruiting candidates? Yeah, definitely, Trisha. So I would definitely say teamwork and collaboration. So 
being able to work in unison, sharing your ideas and th thought processes with others, as well as listening to your colleagues as well is just as important. Um, I would also say communication skills, um, knowing that Apply Board is an international based company. So speaking clearly and effectively is also a very important skill, I would say. Uh, problem solving skills as well. So the ability to think quickly on your feet. And then lastly, I would end it off saying uh, the ability to be flexible and adaptable. So especially within a startup company, uh, processes are always changing and being refined. So being able to demonstrate those skills are, are just as important. And that's interesting because I think there's a lot of talk these days after we've gone through um, experience like COVID-19 and having to pivot really quickly around where you're going to work and how you're going to work. But adaptability, I think, has really moved uh, in that list of, of top soft skills. Definitely. And Apply Board has definitely done that as well. I mean, since the beginning, we've we've asked all of our staff to to work. think what happened there. like we lost Michelle one thing I'd add there Tricia just to kind of fill in the gap is when we are assessing candidates and prospective employees one thing we talk about a lot that really makes us different is instead of like a culture fit into mm -hmm. apply board we look at a culture ad what's actually being brought into the company that we don't have yet so we really value um, diversity of thought um, and we are, to Michelle's point, a collaborative environment where it's okay to disagree, right? And it's all, it's also okay. Some of our interview questions are, tell us about a failure. How did you deal with it? What did you learn? Because we actually um, really push for fail fast, right? Mm -hmm. If we're just trying the same thing over and over again, we won't fail. But if we're trying new products, new ideas, we're going to fail on some of those. And that's okay. So fail fast, learn, and iterate. Well, that and that's such a great uh, motto for any company, you know, who really wants to uh, expand and innovate. Uh, you have to give things a chance and give it a try. And so that is a, a really great way of looking at it. Danielle, I want to bring you in on just getting a little more insight into um, what you love in your job and what you love about working for Apply Board. Yeah, definitely for me, the most important and the most valuable part of being part of apply board is the work environment. I feel respected. I feel I will be always, I will always be heard. Uh, everybody will listen to my concerns and to my ideas, and I will definitely have uh, the support that I need whenever I need from whoever I need. Uh, I feel like everybody's accessible and like uh, my, co my colleague was saying before, it's fun to work. It's not like we are all serious and only work, work, work. We do work. We do. We are concerned with numbers and um, productivity and all the the common things. But we are also having fun together, and I believe that's very important. So, to me, the the biggest and most important part of being part of a fly board is is uh, the work environment for sure. Absolutely, you hear that time and time again. You know that can really make a difference. You know, you you might have a great job. Um, however, it's the environment you feel like you really matter to a company. Akshara, how about you? What's what's your experience? At, first, I wanted to know what was it. What's a typical work day look like for you in your role? And as a student support officer, I don't know too much about the role. Maybe you could just share a little bit about what you do on a daily basis. Yeah, sure. So, a uh, student support officer, um, we actually are in direct contact with our students. Uh, who are looking to study abroad. So we we get in touch with them and uh, we get to know like what they are exactly looking for. And I actually shortlist, uh, you know, programs according to their eligibility, according to their preferences and the interests uh, where they want to pursue their career further. So um, yeah, I, I'm in direct contact with the students and um, yeah, just like they, they follow up with like all the questions and uh, uh, what are the requirements to apply for the university. So, yeah, all of those things are involved in my role. Okay. Um, what do you find most challenging about your role? The most challenging part is uh, sometimes like, um, like that communication 
uh, they sometimes like it, it breaks in between because you know while the student is waiting for to hear back from the college uh, at that time it's hard for them to you know keep like waiting for for the results that whether I got my letter of acceptance or not so just to keep them engaged in that part uh, is is sometimes like um, gets difficult but otherwise otherwise it's okay like uh, I do regular follow-ups and um, telling them that this will be the next step these are the steps we'll be going forward with so be prepared and um, yeah that's that's all so about it so it sounds like one of the top skills you need to have is communication and the ability to calm people and give them information exactly. they need in a just in time way so that they they can become a little more patient around that. I know at the college we go through the same thing. I mean, when you when you're dealing with international students, there's visas, there's all kinds of things and sometimes the college may not have control over that. That is a, a government um glitch that might happen sometimes and I know that that's what it causes a lot of anxiety so it's great if you can help appease them around that and and really guide them through that process yes um I wanted to ask Tav Tavni what sort of experience you typically look for in a resume so when graduates are watching these sort of things and they're really excited about hearing from grads and they want to hear from employers um they're always curious about well how do I get in first, like I can probably talk my way in. I'm, I'll do a great interview, but what are they? What do I need to have on my resume that's that's going to differentiate me from another candidate and really help me to stand out? For sure. So I will say though, uh, for when we do look at resumes, we actually do that manually. So it's the recruiters are sifting, sorry, sifting through one application at a time. We don't have an AI system doing that. And I know that when I do tell uh, candidates that they do find relief that there's actually a person looking at their resume. So they, their resume is being looked at. Um, just wanted to say that in terms of what I look for on a resume. So it can depend, uh, depending on the role, but typically the skills or uh, the sorts of features that I look for on a resume are customer service. Have they been in a customer oriented environment? How many years of customer service do they have? Uh, industry, which industry are they coming from? Do they have the industry knowledge? So we look at things like, are they coming from ed tech or education, technology, uh, te telecommunications, banking, even insurance? Um, have they been in a fast paced environment? Have they done things that allowed them to work collaboratively? And I'll look at the resume and I'll look at the points that they had under these uh, jobs or what the responsibilities have been. If we get into leadership roles, then I'm looking at things like, have they led a team? Do they have people management? Um, do they have the operational side of, uh, sorry, operational skills? Um, are they good at managing data? So that means looking at big amounts of data, sifting through it, organizing it, um, making recommendations and putting together presentations. So those are the typical things that I will look for in a resume. Um, if it gets to a leadership, then I'm looking for a little bit more of the people management, the data management uh, and the operational side of things. Yeah, and I guess it, 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 it as you say, it depends on the, the the role that they're going to be stepping into, the different mm -hmm. skills you'll be looking for. But that's yeah. really great information. I know that grads really want to know, like, how do I bring for if I worked at as a barista, for example, because I was at school and I had to survive. How do I bring that forth on a resume? How do I how do I show that that I know how to communicate with people? I know how to work quickly and get stuff done, and that. Mm -hmm could come through a job um, in, in sales or retail. So yeah, interesting. Yeah. And I wanna add one more thing, you know, most, most importantly, we don't think a resume is an end all or a be all, or is that's what we just look at. We do believe that jumping on a phone call with a candidate will be able to get us more meaningful information or the right inf information that we're looking for. Um, so if there's a resume where we see, you know, titles of customer experience, um, or working in a customer service environment, uh, we will contact that candidate, even if the resume may not be the most sufficient, because there might be some experiences in there that we want to explore. So mm. we do jump on a call, we do talk to candidates. If a resume isn't like perfect, 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 doesn't mean that we're gonna just, you know, ex nay you out. If you have experience that we like, then we're gonna jump on a call with you and we're gonna explore your profile further. Yeah, and it's more, you get the three-dimensional person a bit there. And then it comes down to add into this. Sorry for jumping in twice now, but I think it's important. 
um, Tav and the rest of the recruitment team, now around 27 people in total globally, is really good about advocating for their candidates. Mm -hmm. So meaning like, well, this candidate doesn't have X amount of years experience. Yes, but they have this transferable skill or they have this kind of learning agility. That's the way we need to look at. That's, that's kind of the battle we fight in talent acquisition and we call it candidate advocacy. So just wanted to add that in. No, that, and that's a good, really good point to make. Um, and you know, it is a relief, Tavni, you mentioned earlier, like not using an applicant tracking system. I think those kinds of, uh, they're, 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 they just remove the person so much from the actual experience. And, and I know that, yeah, grads are really nervous about that because often they may be brand new grads with not a lot of experience in a particular field, but they have all kinds of other experience and they're, they're nervous about how to, to pull that forward. And I think that's a good point. I have a quick question around. So I'm always helping graduates put together LinkedIn profiles. How much um, do you use? How much do you use LinkedIn profiles to view a candidate? Because usually you can get some really good content on LinkedIn profile if you're if you're writing stuff about your field. If you are um, involved in things that you really want to, to come alive, you can do that with LinkedIn. You can't do that so much with resumes. Um, how do you use LinkedIn? I will say uh, we use it every day. Um, there's a lot of rules that we have to go on LinkedIn or we have to go out of our you know, traditional ways of receiving resumes. We have to go out there and find candidates and LinkedIn is a, an excellent platform. There are so many professionals on there. Um, there's a lot of information on there and it, it's a great resource. So we use it every day, I would say. Okay, that, that's good to know. I, I, I think grads need to know that they, it's important to make it, it work. It's another tool that they can use in their job search and to make sure it looks really professional. And you know what I'll also say, Trisha, it's important that, you know, you have a LinkedIn profile, but it's important to follow up. It's important to go into your inbox and check the messages that you do receive. Um, mm -hmm. From what I see, I find that there's a lot more seasoned professionals that use LinkedIn, mm -hmm. not so much uh, grads okay. that are responsive within inbox messages or, you know, sorry, the messages. Um, so I will say, create a LinkedIn profile. But make sure you're active on it. That's a good point. I know often I think grads just say, okay, I've done this. I've created my LinkedIn. Sometimes it's just an, um, uh, an assignment they get at school. You got to get your LinkedIn together. And then they forget to use it once they graduated. So that's a really good point. And I'm hoping grads will hear that loud and clear and really pay attention to, to using it as a resource that, that could really help them. So earlier, I think it was Tavni or maybe Michelle who mentioned that the interview is 45 minutes long. And I, Danilo, I was wondering, how did you prepare for that interview? Thank you, Tricia. Yeah, so the interview was very smooth and felt like a conversation more than an actual interview, which made me feel very comfortable. And I believe that's good for me so I can express how I really am and what my actually my actual feelings are like. Uh, in terms of the preparation, I would say the most important part is to do a lot of research about the company and pay attention to the job description and see what are your transferable skills like Tavi was previously speaking about um, and pay attention to what are your skills, what are your experiences and how you could add onto the company and how you can become uh, a a team member that will add value to the company as well as um, you will take advantage of the company yourself. So my preparation uh, started with a thorough, uh, thorough review um, and research about the company. I found out about the, the prizes and everything that Applyboard has been through, has gone through, and I ensure to read and assess every single bullet point of the job description and match it with my resume and my experiences. So I would be able to um, express and convince people to hire me based on my experience and, on, and how I would be able to add value to the company. Well, and, and I, I know Michael was mentioning that too, that when they do the interview, they are looking for, to bring people on who are a culture ad. So what, what are you gonna add to that environment, to the team, to helping the company move forward? So great to prepare your answers in that way where you think about where where have you added value previously and bring that into the answer. So so great, absolutely great. Um, Trisha, Jeff, I, I, I was wondering, oh, sorry. 
Oh, sorry, Trish, I just wanted to add in there um, yeah. to add to uh, Daniel's point uh, from the side of the, the perspective of the TA. Throughout this entire process, TA does an excellent job of informing each and every candidate of how to prepare for the interview. Um, for instance, from a phone screen and going into a hiring manager, I believe, Daniel, you got these points too. Maybe I didn't add them during this template, but we send out uh, bullet points of how to prepare for the next uh, interview with a hiring manager. So how to dress, where to sit, what the lighting should look like, how to prepare in terms of Daniel nailed it. He said, understand the job description and talk about how you're going to bring a uh, bring up. Uh, sorry, you're going to add to it or how your relevant experience connects to the job. So I just want to say that uh, from the TA perspective, we try to do our best to make the entire process an informative process and when the candidate steps into an interview, they are prepared. Well, that's a really refreshing look at it, right? Because um, I have been on panels where I've been hiring and I, you know, they're always a little bit uncomfortable, right? Those situations where you're, you're trying to catch someone making a mistake. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel very um, organic. And I think you're right. Let the let the candidate be prepared. Do your best to help support them. They'll do a better job and they'll be more relaxed in in when they when they speak in an interview and you'll see the real person. And that's what you want. You don't want to make people feel really uptight so that they're tense. You know, um, I think that's a really brilliant way to look at it. Mm -hmm. And I think like, uh, just to add on, it's just, it says like, it's 45 minutes, but like. It's so natural that you just keep on having the conversation and you don't even realize that it was 45 minutes. And when I had my interview, I was like, it didn't feel like I'm talking to this person for the first time. It yeah. felt like I have known this person like for many years. So um, it's all about like sharing the experiences and sharing those um, situations that you have come across, like how they say behavioral and situational questions that you get in an interview. So it will all be like, it will all be connected and related to what you have been doing so far. So just yeah. be confident on yourself. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear there's been such a positive experience for both of both of our graduates, you know, and it sounds like you felt that you were, you, you know, it was an environment where you, you, they wanted to bring you in. They, they were interested in really having you join the team and they went about making you comfortable in your, your interview process. Sounds good. Uh, Michelle, I have a question for you. What are, what are some of the career pathways that employees can explore at the company and how does the, the HR support employees to move around the company and expo explore various opportunities? Yeah, I can take this one um, just to keep it fluid, Michelle. Thanks, um, So Tricia, yes to your question. Um, you know, to speak 100% transparency, Transparently, we're a growing organization, so a lot of a lot of the aspects to your to your question are still in flight. Um, we are looking to do a much better job on internal mobility. Right, um, we do a good job today, but we need to be doing a great job. It's a retention tool, and it's also a tool at talent acquisition at the front end of the funnel. Um, so some of the pathways that we see that we are looking to develop, I'll talk about on future state okay. is shadow programs. So if I'm in Tav's world, right, and I'm a CX representative, but I'm very interested in recruiting, we look to set up a specific shadow program where someone can get a realistic job preview. Um, number two, stretch assignments, we call them bungees, right? So you bungee in, you bungee out is I want to try something I've already shadowed, but now I want to try it for a fixed amount of time. So your current job is protected while you go work in a different field and, and bungee back. These are some of the programs that we're looking to innovate on. Um, in a more common structure, we have internal applicants applying all over the organization. Um, we like to treat internals with special care, right? We want to make sure every internal resume is seen by the hiring manager, right? We do a baseline fundamentals to say we want an individual in their current role that they're hired to for at least nine months before they make a change, right? That's a, that, that covers your ramp time, probationary periods, 
and it gives you enough time to be really good at your job before you say, hey, I want to go check something else out. Mm -hmm. Those sound great. I've never actually that I've never heard that bungee jumping way of putting the, the stretch, what you call it, so the stretch pro assignments. What a great idea. Um, because, you know, when, when someone starts to go into a company and they want to look around, they want to stay, typically, I think people want to stay at a good company, right? And as long as there's, there are clear pathways that make sense to them and having an opportunity to go in and test out something and come back, that's that safety net, which allows for that movement. I mean, it works great for an employee, works great for a company. I wonder if Michelle's back with us. I don't know if she wanted to add anything to that. I did hear Michael's response, which was incredible. So thank you, Michael, for handling that question. I think he pretty much handled, uh, he covered all the points that I had wanted to address, but kind of just reiterating that, you know, again, here at Apply Board, we, we really do value our employees. And our number one goal is to make sure that, you know, we're providing them with the tools and resources to set them for their success. Even up to the senior leadership team, you know, they receive training, they know what to expect on their end so that when their employees come to them and express interest in another role, whether that be within their team or department or not, they can be that guide source of guide for their staff and provide them with those tools and resources to set them up for that success for sure. And I think what Michael was saying, like it's, it, you know, you are, it's a, it's a fairly new company. It's still young um, and with the sudden you know, explosion of employee numbers, uh, you know, it's it's sort of trying to figure out how do we do this the right way? Because I think when you have that kind of incredible growth, there's always a fear you could do the wrong way. So sitting back and really thinking about, you know, how do you want this to work? What is the best way to, to ensure that employees are happy, that teams are, are still functioning? Um, it takes time, you're right. I just wanted to add to that, Trisha. Um, one, I just want to highlight one thing that we, I think we do very, very well is when there is an internal application and say if that internal application just doesn't make it through one of the uh, interview rounds, that's a coaching moment for the hiring manager. And what they'll do is they will actually sit with that internal candidate and talk with them, provide them feedback and try to like make that as a, like I said, coaching moment or a guiding moment. So it's not just you're not moving forward and impersonal, it's the hiring manager taking the time to sit with that internal candidate, providing them feedback, providing them guidance, and what steps to take in the future. And you know, that's a huge investment that you make on your management team. So that that's a great way to, to, to look at that. Um, I wanted to ask um, Ashkara and Danilo, what advice would you give to a graduate who is interested in learning more about Apply Board or uh, joining apply board, what, what kind of advice would you have? Um, I will start, <laughs> I would say most important thing is do your research, uh, learn about the company. See if you really want to be part of the company. If you really like this kind of job and everything else, uh, on top of that, I would say in general, if you're looking for a job, as soon as you graduate, work on your communication skills. Don't be afraid of reaching out to people that you think might help you to get to the job. Um, ensure that you work on your professional image. So it doesn't matter where you work or what kind of job you do. Uh, ensure that you do it well, because you never know who is going to be with you in your next step. Um, and try to acquire and develop skills, soft and hard skills. Uh, doing whatever jobs you have. So, because this will be absolutely needed when you go to another interview process, it's important that you know what to say and how to say and show to the employer that you acquire and developed skills in your current position. It doesn't matter if you're a barista or if you're a CEO of a company, uh, you are always learning and that should be um, shown to the person who is uh, hiring you at the moment. What about um, Akshara, what do you think? What, what advice would you give to grads who are out there looking for their first opportunity or their next opportunity? Sure, so uh, I would say like, as Danielo mentioned that uh, just do a refined research that where, where you're going for and what you're looking for on basis of that, be like, prepare yourself. Uh, also, another thing is like, you, if you're looking for future opportunities, the another good uh, method is networking because it helps you build some connections and 
uh, it helps you even get to know like you know more people and it improves your communication skills as well uh, because your focus that okay I want this and I'm working towards it. It it doesn't matter if it doesn't work in the first time, but like just never give up on trying. And I would say also keep updating your resumes because we forget about our resumes and uh, we just go on. So uh, not for every job, the same resume will not work. So you have to edit your resume for each and every job description and match it with your previous experiences. So, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. Actually, I think um, especially about, you know, keep your resume up to date, keep your LinkedIn up to date uh, while things are still fresh that you're doing. You never know and, and you might see something within a company or in another company that you want to to move into and always thinking about, you know, refreshing your LinkedIn and resume. So really good, really good advice. Thank you both of you. Thank you. Patricia, I just wanted to quickly expand on what Akshara said about never giving up. Um, that's like, I think that's the best advice to give to new grads. Don't give up. Uh, there have been uh, situations at apply board where there have been candidates that have applied, you know, a few times they've gone through the interview process. Maybe the first time they didn't get it. They wait a couple of months, apply again, second round. They get in, you know, so it's yeah. about being persistent, continuously trying. And just what Daniel and Akshara said to update your resume and to apply what you've learned. So then when you do go forward to the next round of interviews with apply board, you have a better chance. But uh, I'll also say like at apply board, we don't discriminate against if you've already applied and you didn't get through to the interview rounds. We're very open minded. That's great. Good, good messaging. I like that. Um, okay, I have 1 last question. I'm going, I'm not sure. I don't see Michael here. I was going to direct it to Michael. Um, I, maybe someone else would like to take it. Um, so basically, or we could go back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, where do you foresee growth? Uh, in the education industry and how does. Uh, apply board impact the community that it serves. Um, I think I can take the lead on this 1, or at least get the ball rolling. So I know just based on from like a TA perspective, uh, working with my colleagues, um, our target again, from a talent recruitment is to branch ourselves and brand ourselves globally. So, yes, we have employees that are located. All over the world, uh, but we definitely that's that's not sufficient enough for us. We want to uh, eventually go off to our neighbors uh, to over to the US. Um, we do have a couple entities already established there, but we definitely want to in the long term establish an office, start having you know employees work there, have students apply. Um, so we're definitely heading into that direction. Um, that will be a long term goal. It won't happen overnight for sure, but I do know that the ball has already started. Um, I think in terms of how a pie board has made it made an impact in the community. Um, we're very well versed and very well included in our community. Um, I'm sure students, um, citizens have seen whether that be on the news, um, newspapers, you know, we're very well included. Um, we always like to share, you know, what the company has done, the successes that we've achieved. Um, you know, we used to have uh, face to face events. Um, now, with, you know, what's going on in the world, we definitely have uh, adapted. I feel like that's a common theme in this call, but we've adapted to to be virtual now. Right? So, whether that's speaking to the public, whether that's speaking to students and candidates, our own colleagues, um, we've adapted that way to be able to be inclusive and, and, and hear people's stories, have people hear our stories where apply board the direction that we're heading in. Um, I think from all of us here, we can probably all agree that we're very transparent as a company where we like to share, you know, what the company has succeeded and where we're heading towards. Um, I feel like anytime we've reached like a milestone or a goal, we do a huge celebration, but then it's like, okay, guys, on to the next one. Like, what, what can we achieve next? Right? The ball is always rolling, which I think it keeps everyone engaged, not only within the company, but, you know, our citizens and community as well. And it's it's just such a necessary service. I, I think it's just, you know, when I, I hadn't heard about apply board, I was very surprised. Um, and then when I started to look a little deeper into the company, I was like, wowza, this is this is great. This is so needed. So um I wish the company all the best as it grows and develops. 
Um, I think you're going to be awesome. <laughs> and I want to thank everyone for, for joining uh, me today. I really appreciate you taking the time, sharing great information about apply board and how our gra grads could prepare well for, for the, applying to the company. Um, it was great, of course, to hear directly from Akshara and Danilo. Hearing from our grads is just amazing for us to know that they're in great companies and they're, they're really thriving and doing well. So thank you so much. So that's Thanks. it. Take care and have a wonderful day. Thanks again for joining us. Thank, thank you, Trisha. Thanks, Trisha. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye, everyone.